Hey Stingers, it's blackberry season. The berries aren't here yet, but the, the um, leaves are popping up everywhere, aren't they? Now, careful observers will notice something special about these ones. Do you see them? Two of our room nine stingers. We've got, whoops, walking sticks. They're also called stick bugs. They're also called phasmids. That's because they are known as ghost bugs because they can disappear. Not really, they don't disappear, but they do seem to. Then you get them out of their habitat these guys love eating blackberry, so they look like blackberry plants. That way the birds won't notice them and they'll eat the berry instead of the bug. <laughs> so these guys are pretty neat. They're becoming adults, so they're getting their red armpits. I don't know why they're red. Maybe it has to do with the berries so there they go. Now I have the rest of their clan back at home, but I just brought these guys along with me for our story time today. And you're probably wondering, why did she bring bugs out to the woods in a jar? Well, because they are kind of the star of the show. So I'm gonna start with Luna Loves Library Day. Everyone who knows me knows I love libraries. I have them. At home in school, I've been a librarian. I love building libraries. I love them. Luna loves library day. Library bag, check. Library card, check. Books to return, check. Oh, she's got a Matisse on the wall. Look at that, beauty. Um, I forgot to tell you that Joseph Colo and Fiona Lumbers made this. Mom drops Luna off at the library. Dad is always waiting with his head in a book. Ah, oh, what a great day. Head to the library, dad's there. Today we start in the big book section. The big book of dinosaurs, mummies, and unexplained mysteries. Into the book bag it goes, check. Luna loves bugs. Oh, first clue about why we brought you. Can you see his little red armpits? So cute. You have cute armpits. Luna loves bugs. Dad hates bugs. They make his face go all Argh. Argh. There are bug books with ants, spiders, and Maurice Mandible's mini monsters. Into the book bag it goes, check. How many of you know what mandibles are? Dad knows the magic tricks, like how to make coins appear out of Luna's nose and ears. Another book for the bag. Dad knows how to disappear. Luna wants to learn how to bring him back. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Mirabella's book of magic mayhem. Into the book bag it goes, check. Dad finds a history book about where he grew up, where he used to play, and the library he used to go to. All the photos are black and white, and the trees look strange. So he must be from somewhere tropical, but now lives somewhere that isn't. Into the book bag it goes, check. Luna chooses a fairy tale to read with dad on the big library chair, as soft as a teddy's hug. The Troll King and the Mermaid Queen. I am the king, the troll king, married to the mermaid queen. I am the queen, the mermaid queen. Oops, I had to switch my voice. Married to the troll king. I'm the princess, the wave surfing princess. My mother is a mermaid. My father is a troll. I can swim in any ocean. I'm at home in any hole. 
the mermaid and troll would argue, though their love for the princess was deep. Mermaids like splishing and splashing, trolls like thundering their feet. Their home became a swell of sounds, crashing waves, banging boulders, a chaotic clatter of growls and gurgles, of goats and fish, and so the Troll King left. I think that's what it means by daddy disappears, right? Like dad's living in a different house now and they're meeting at the library. She wants to know how to bring dad back. Kind of reminds me of real life. Right in the fairy tales, that's where you find it. My love for my, but one thing always remained the same. My love for my princess daughter swells my heart with the force of the tides. My love for my princess daughter has depths that no hole can hide. The end. Aww. Books to, for president. Books to save the world. Vote for books. Luna checks out her books. Unexplained mysteries, check. Mini monsters, check. Magic mayhem, check. Memories of the imagined island, check. The troll king and the mermaid queen, check. I like all these things hanging on the bulletin board because every library has all these little events and advertisements for the community. A book bag full of memories about adventure, magic, and dad, check. Luna loves library day. Now she's home reading that fairy tale to herself and there are all her library books. So let's talk about Maurice Mandible. That is an awesome name for the author of a bug book because mandibles are the little parts, not their jaws that chomp their food, but those little parts that are on the outside of their jaws that pull the food into their mouth, right? That's from Harry Potter, Chamber of Secrets. Um, <laughs> so, bugs. I was reading on Epic. How many of you have been reading on Epic? Uh, it's so cool. When I was a kid, I would have loved that. Go on your computer and look up a book by a subject, an author, a level, a type of book. Ugh, and then there's just so many. Good trick, walking stick. This one's on there. Oh, that's why you brought us. Yeah, and because it gets a little bit lonely when my students aren't with me while I'm teaching, but they'll get to see this later, okay? Say hi to those guys, they miss you. See, he's waving. Hi. Hi, Stingers. Miss you. Okay. Good trick, walking stick. This is on Epic, guys. Get on there. Even if your class isn't signed up, it's 30 days free right now. This is by Sherry Bester and Johnny Lambert. Drop, drop, drop. Tiny eggs fall to the ground like a slow rain on an autumn day. Leaves float on the breeze and hide the eggs. The air turns crisp, snowflakes drift. The woods are covered in a blanket of white. Underground, buried deep, the eggs are safe. Now, for the sake of this video's length, I'm not gonna read the extended parts down here. I'm just reading the bigger, broader message. So, I learned this from these, this book specifically. I didn't know. They drop their eggs or, and they look like seeds. So they trick the ants into taking their seeds underground and keeping them warm to incubate them. Huh. The ants take them and march them into their nest. And then just like they usually do, they eat off the top of the, the seed because that's the really good part. I forget what it's called, but they store the rest of it. So the walking sticks eggs are actually designed like a seed so that they eat the top off, but leave the, the tiny 
growing grub in there. I know. And then they stay warm and then when they hatch, they just come on out. When spring comes, the sun melts the snow. Drip, 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 it warms the earth. An egg moves, wiggle, 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 pop. Or wait, no, I'm not gonna do it. I normally put my finger in my mouth and go pop, but I'm trying not to put my fingers in my mouth. Out crawls an insect. It looks like a stick. It can walk. It's a walking stick. Although it actually isn't because it's an animal. It's not a plant, it just looks like one. <sighs> the baby walking stick is hungry. She begins her search for food. She finds a leaf that she is low to the ground. She eats. This looks like strawberry based on the flowers. Munch and eats, munch. I could see if these guys would like strawberry leaves, but mine don't have these stripes and I think they're just a different kind. So the babies are called nymphs and they actually look exactly like the adult, except for that their coloring and stuff isn't quite the same in their dimensions. But um, they're not like a lot of insects that start out in a larva stage, like a caterpillar or a mealworm. Just tinier version of their parent like us. Eats, munch, munch. As the baby walking stick eats, she grows. As she grows, her outer shell or casing becomes tight. The baby walking stick wiggles and stretches. She sheds her casing and grows a new one. The walking stick blends into the forest. Good trick, walking stick. One of his best tricks is the ability to be camouflaged. Coming back to that. <gasps> but here comes a bird with keen eyes. Swoop. It grabs the walking stick. <gasps> The stick insect squirts a bad smelling juice. Ick! The bit bird spits out the walking stick. Ooh, good trick, walking stick. But uh oh, the young stick has lost a leg. That, that's all right though. She'll grow a new one when she grows a new casing. So we used to let these guys get held by our room nine friends in the morning and some of them lost their legs. I tried to teach them that you have to let the, the insects crawl onto a leaf or onto your hand. You can't grab them. But luckily when they molted or grew a new outer shell, hey, there's a bug joining me right in my face. Um, they grow back their new, a new limb. Good trick, walking stick. We thought we were being tricky, calling them names like Cinco if they had five legs, but then we didn't know who it was once they, they shed their skin. The stick insect climbs up looking for food. Up, up, up she goes. The tree has many leaves. The stick insect will not go hungry. Just making sure these guys didn't escape. I thought they did for a sec. <sighs> The tree is filled with other st stick insects. She will not be alone. Using two claws and a suction cup on each foot, the adult stick insect is a good climber. Yeah, they got spidey shoes. At the end of the, in the light of the day, she sits perfectly still on a twig. She has turned the colors to match the bark of the tree. Good trick, walking stick. So if you want to read those um, finer print parts and find out more about them, you can read that on Epic. Along comes a hungry squirrel. Uh-oh, the stick insect sways in the breeze. Now we know this trick. You turn, make some loud noise around the bugs or bump their cage, they start doing this. And it's to try to look like a real bug. They're really trying to trick you because they think, uh-oh, I need to put on my best show. Um, someone's watching. He sways in the breeze with the branches. The squirrel comes near. Its tail brushes the stick insect. Too close. Quick as a sneeze, the stick insect pulls in her legs and drops to the forest floor, just like a stick falling off a larger branch. The squirrel scurries away. The stick insect is safe. Good trick, walking stick. The walking stick doesn't move. All day she stays still. This is this is what happened with last year's bugs. When they got to their biggest size, they slowed down. They became, you know, 
more still and tired. She can't run fast, she can't fly, she can only hide, camouflage like a stick. The sunlight fades, darkness comes. It's safer now, so the walking stick climbs back up into the tree. She joins the other walking sticks. She's changed color to match the night. Good trick, walking stick. Whew, it says some bats can eat the walking stick, so that their camouflage does nothing to them because they use echolocation and not their sight to find them. So if bats are around, I'm sorry. Oh, I was trying to get a spider to come join us, but it used its spinnerets and spin away. In the dark, birds are no longer looking for food. Squirrels rest, only night animals move. Munch, crunch, crunch, munch. The walking sticks move around eating leaves. They eat and eat and eat. Summer begins to fade. Colors pop up out of the leaves. Female stick insects spritz their perfume into the cooling air. Male walking sticks smell the perfume. They choose mates. The stick insect does not find a mate. Alone, she sits on a twig until, from high in the tree, one at a time, her eggs fall to the forest floor. Drop, drop, plop. We've seen this before. It's the circle of life. It's the wheel of fortune. Female walking sticks can produce eggs even without a mate. This is called parthenogenesis. If the eggs are not fertilized, they will hatch and be females. Every species is different. Frost lulls the woods into a winter deep sleep. The air turns crisp and snowflakes drift to the forest floor, but the eggs are safe. Under the snow, inside seed-like shells, the walking stick's daughters are growing. Until one day, the snow melts, drip, 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 and spring blooms, wiggle, wiggle, pop. Out walk more stick insects. Good trick, walking stick. Oh, look at that. That's really pretty. It's all the plants that we saw them walking on inside the book. Good job, Johnny Lambert and Sherry Bester. Okay, signing off. But before we go, I wanna tell you that if you haven't read The Wild Robot, my class just finished this, it is awesome. And there's a chapter called The Camouflaged Insect where the robot learns from a stick bug how to use camouflage and it changes the course of the robot's life. You should ch 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 check it out at the library. Bye. Oh, I was trying to find, yeah. Check it out at the library. Be like Luna and her daddy. Have a good day.